Hello, this is an example illustrating the use of the LRFD load combinations in the ASCE 7 standard for a column in a typical building. In this problem, we're going to consider a column in a building that's subjected to a dead load of 80 kips, a live load of 100 kips, a roof live load of 20 kips, a snow load of 50 kips, and a wind load of 25 kips. All the loads cause compression in the column except for the wind load, which can cause either compression or tension. The objective of the problem is to first determine the maximum and minimum factored loads that must be considered for design, and then, assuming that we have a resistance factor of 0.85 used to compute the design strength of the column, we want to determine the required nominal strength of the column, R sub n. Here are the seven load combinations that we're going to use for this example. These combinations come from the 2022 edition of the ASCE 7 standard. Note that I've included a coefficient of 0.5 on the live load in combinations 3 and 4, which is permitted in the ASCE 7 standard when the unreduced live load does not exceed 100 pounds per square foot. Also note that combinations 2, 3, and 4 all include L sub R, S, or R. One of the first things that we'll do is modify those combinations to include a roof loading that is taken as the maximum of the roof live load, snow load, and rain load. When we make that modification, the load combinations look like this, where we have rewritten the load combinations 3, 4, and 5 using an R in place of the roof loading. In combinations 2 and 4, I'm using R sub APT to represent the roof loading at its arbitrary point in time level, and in combination number 3, I'm using R sub MLL to represent the roof loading at its maximum lifetime level. This can be a little bit confusing at first since we're using R to denote the rain load in some cases and we're using R to denote the roof loading in other cases, but after you work through a couple of examples, you should find the utility of this approach will become apparent. Next, let's expand the seven basic load combinations into these 27 permutations. To see how this was done, check out the video that's linked here. First of all, there aren't any earthquake loads in this example, so we don't need to consider load combinations 6 or 7. Next, since the live load and the roof load act in the same sense, they both cause compression, permutation 2R will govern over permutation 2 in load combination number 2 where live load is a primary variable, and permutation 3L will govern over permutation 3 in load combination number 3 where the roof loading is a primary variable. When we consider wind load in combination number 3, we need to consider only permutation 3WP where the wind load and the roof load are additive, meaning in this case that they both cause compression in the column. Wind load is treated as a primary loading in load combinations 4 and 5, and when the wind load causes compression in the column and is additive to the dead load, permutation number 4LRP will control. When the wind load causes tension in the column, however, acting in the opposite sense as the dead load, permutation 5N will control. Next, we'll calculate the roof loading at its arbitrary point in time level, as is shown here. As you can see, the snow load governs, and the arbitrary point in time roof loading is 0.3 times 50 kips, or 15 kips. Similarly, the maximum lifetime roof loading is also governed by the snow load and has a magnitude of 50 kips. When we substitute the magnitudes of our loads into these load combinations, you can see that the maximum force effect comes from load combination number 2 and the minimum effect comes from load combination number 5. Note that when we evaluate load combination number 5 for the case where wind causes an uplift, that we substitute in a value of positive 25 kips instead of a negative 25 kips. That's because there's already a negative sign in that combination. If we were to substitute a value of negative 25 kips into that load combination, the result would be that the wind load would be in the same sense as the dead load, and that isn't what we want to capture in load combination number five. Now that we know that our required strength, the sum of gamma times q, 
is 271 kips, we can divide by the resistance factor of 0 0.85 to determine the required nominal strength, R sub n, which ends up being 319 kips. Finally, as a check, here are the results of a spreadsheet that I have constructed to evaluate all of the possible permutations of load combinations 1 through 5. As a follow-up, let's consider a slightly different version of the same problem. Suppose that the live load in the column is now 40 kips acting in tension instead of 100 kips acting in compression, with all of the other loads remaining unchanged. Let's start again with these 27 permutations of the seven basic load combinations. Again, there aren't any earthquake loads in this example, so we don't need to consider load combinations 6 or 7. Next, since the live load and the roof load act in the opposite sense in this case, the live load causes tension while the roof loads cause compression, permutation 2 will govern over permutation 2R, where the live load is a primary loading, and permutation 3 will govern over permutation 3L, where the roof load is a primary loading. When we consider the wind load in combination number 3, we again need to consider only permutation 3WP where the wind load and the roof load are additive, meaning in this case that they both cause compression in the column. In load combinations four and five, where wind is treated as the primary loading, combination number four addresses the case where the wind load is additive to the dead load, and combination number five addresses the case where the wind load acts in the opposite sense as the dead load. When the wind load is additive to the dead load, permutation 4RP will control, since including live load would actually reduce the factored load in the column. And when wind load acts opposite to the dead load, permutation 5N will control. When we substitute into the relevant permutations of the load combinations, note that in this case, where the live load appears, that we have to use a value of negative 40 kips. In this problem, the implied side convention is that compression is positive. Thus, with a live load that causes tension, we have to use a negative sign on live load to indicate that it acts in the opposite sense of the other gravity loads. Note that this is handled a little bit differently than it is for wind load. The load combinations are built around the idea that wind could be acting in either direction and, within the context of this problem, cause either tension or compression in the column. Thus, there's a plus or minus sign built into the combinations with respect to wind. However, the same isn't true for gravity loads. For gravity loads, we have to use the appropriate sign on the magnitudes of those loads as we enter them into the load combinations. Now that we have our new required design strength of a sum of gamma times Q equal to 158.5 kips, we can determine our required nominal strength, R sub n, by dividing by the resistance factor of 0 0.85. In this case, you can see that we would need to have a nominal strength, R sub n, of 187 kips. And finally, here is a screenshot of the spreadsheet that I use to check all of the different permutations of load combinations 1 through 5.